The Denver Police Department has a long history of monitoring public activities through an extensive network of surveillance technologies. One of the most significant milestones in this journey was the launch of the High Activity Location Observation Camera Network in 2008. It is one more set of eyes, 70 different sets of eyes um, in places that maybe an officer in a patrol car can't be at that moment. This initiative, which debuted during the Democratic National Convention in Denver, saw the installation of nearly 300 cameras across the city. Mel Thompson, Denver's deputy safety manager, described the HALO program as a force multiplier. We can very quickly zoom in on areas and give officers responding uh, direction of travel and other important information. Highlighting its potential to significantly enhance the department's monitoring capabilities. Oh, counting of the cash right here. Within seconds, we watch them catch a drug deal going down right in the middle of a park. This guy is actually using, that's his crack pipe. In 2015, the DPD further expanded its surveillance repertoire by finalizing its body-worn camera policy. This initiative was supported by a $6.1 million request to implement a five-year program with Axon, a leading provider of law enforcement technologies. The program aimed to increase transparency and accountability within the police force by equipping officers with body cameras. In August 2019, the DPD took another significant step by opening the Real-Time Crime Information Center. This center integrates various surveillance systems, including the HALO network, which had grown to encompass 800 cameras, and the city's shot spotter system, designed to detect and locate gunfire. Not only is the city watching, it's listening too. The city's shot spotter system is connected to the new center, when someone fires a gun, the system can tell police where that gun went off. Shot spotter alert goes off. Obviously, uh, it would be beneficial to, to then get those eyes and ears pointed in the direction of, of uh, where those escape routes are. Additionally, to combat car theft, the DPD is installing 111 cameras citywide to read license plates and flag stolen vehicles, as well as plates associated with violent crimes and hit and runs. Despite the potential benefits of these surveillance technologies, their continuous adoption by the DPD raises concerns about the balance of power between law enforcement and the public without addressing the underlying systemic issues contributing to crime. The adoption of body cameras by the DPD was a widely supported initiative, garnering backing from various groups, including the County Sheriffs of Colorado, the American Civil Liberties Union, and several city and legal organizations. Colorado lawmakers even approved a bill to create a grant program for body cameras, allocating nearly $90,000 for the cause. Fort Collins Police Services reported a 100% reduction in use of force complaints within the first year of implementing body cameras, with officers noting that individuals generally acted calmer when they knew they were being recorded. This also led to a reduction in court overtime as video evidence resulted in fewer cases going to trial. However, the extensive data collected through body cameras presents a significant issue. For example, a study from the Arvada Police Department found that their patrol officers generated at least one terabyte of data every two weeks, equivalent to 500 movies. While officers can legally record any scene where they are present, the general public does not have the same access to this data, raising concerns about transparency and privacy. The RTCIC represents another powerful tool in the DPD's surveillance arsenal, providing digital access to the entire city. This is essentially our, our eyes and ears. They serve as almost a virtual partner to, to officers out on the street. And uh, this is a, an additional tool that, that we've been able to leverage in order to keep uh, our city safe. Launched in August 2019, the RTCIC connects to an extensive network of surveillance cameras, including those from Denver Public Schools, the Regional Transportation District, CDOT, and even Coors Field. 
We have the ability to move the cameras that are available to us that we can put in a certain place for just a certain period of time. Lieutenant Ernie Martinez, who runs the program, emphasized that while it is impossible to place an officer on every corner, technology can effectively extend the reach and capabilities of the police force. However, this level of surveillance raises significant privacy concerns. Mark Silverstein, legal director of the ACLU of Colorado, argues that real-time video surveillance erodes privacy, inhibits freedom, and chills public expression with little evidence of reducing criminal activity. It seems to me that um, police is relying more and more and more on surveillance of just individual and regular Coloradans, regular Denverites, and so that's a little disconcerting. I also think it will be really interesting to find out where they have placed these surveillance cameras. And my and I think the ACLU question is: Are are they in uh, predominantly um, Latino African American neighborhoods? The placement of these cameras often disproportionately targets African-American and Latino neighborhoods, exacerbating concerns about racial profiling and over-policing in marginalized communities. The DPD's use of license plate recognition technology to combat car theft has also sparked controversy. While the deployment of 111 cameras citywide has reportedly led to a significant decrease in car thefts, with a 90% reduction in thefts at the airport alone, it also raises issues of privacy and potential misuse. Catherine Ordonez, policy counsel for the ACLU of Colorado, stresses the need for robust privacy policies to prevent the misuse of collected data. The installation of license plate readers at key intersections such as 6th Avenue and Federal Boulevard has led to concerns that these cameras disproportionately affect people of color and those in need of social services. This sounds like the city has its big brother sitting there at the controls watching everything. What's your response to groups who express concerns about this type of surveillance? This was uh, done uh, with uh, you know those considerations in mind. These are all public uh, cameras. Uh, we do not tie into any uh, personal cameras. The sheer quantity of data collected through these surveillance technologies poses a risk of mission creep, where systems initially intended for serious crimes begin to be used for prosecuting minor offenses. Matt Cagle, an attorney with the ACLU of Northern California, notes that most people do not want their data to be used to prosecute petty crimes, but this is a common pattern with such surveillance systems. In conclusion, the continuous adoption of surveillance technologies by the Denver Police Department reinforces their power over the public without addressing the systemic problems contributing to crime. While these technologies are often implemented in the name of public safety, they serve to deepen the power dynamics between the police and the community, allowing for extensive data collection and increased surveillance.